Sunday morning with mamas and daddies. I'm just kind of old fashioned like that. It has to be. The seat of authority has to be at home with moms and dads. When you want to change the society, get moms and dads to take seriously their responsibility as moms and dads to provide authority and structure and discipline. What's oh, a word that we hate? We hate that word, even us adults. We don't like it. We don't like the word discipline. We hate the very thought of someone saying that we ought to be more disciplined or that there's, there's going to be discipline brought to bear on our lives. We squirm at it. I'm an adult. I'm grown. I'm 21 years old plus a number four more years. Yeah. Anyway, but we don't want it. We don't want discipline. We need discipline. We shouldn't hate it. We ought to love it because it helps us conform to a holy standard. Amen. It helps us conform to a holy standard, and when we conform to the holy standard, God has promised to bless us. Amen. This is good preaching. Preach, young man, preach. Amen. And Joshua understood that. You see, we live in a, in a culture today where everybody wants to be free agents. You only go join the NFL or NBA. You can be a free agent in the NFL or NBA if you want to. And then you can test the market and see what you work. But in the Christian community, there is no such thing as a free agent. Right. You are a Christian. You are a child of God. You are a member of the household of faith. You come under the authority of the church, and the church has the final authority. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. That's what the Bible says. Right. Paul rebuked yeah. the Corinthian church. He says, I dare you, taking a brother and sister to, to court, going to the ungodly in the judicial system and expecting for them to bring about justice. Should you not go to the people of God who are committed to justice and holiness, don't you know that God's people will rule and will judge angels? That's what the Bible says. Read it for yourself, 1 Corinthians 6 and 7. But it's foreign to us. That type of stuff is kind of foreign to us. And maybe that's why we don't have the power that we desire to have. I'm going to move on and I'm going to wrap this thing up. Joshua understood that. He understood his calling. He understood the importance of rigid, unwavering obedience to the word of God. And he understood the importance of following through on God's word. So the Bible says in verse 15, everything that the Lord had commanded Moses, his servant, so did Moses command Joshua, and so did Joshua. He left nothing undone of all that the Lord commanded him. Yeah. Everything that God had told Moses to tell Joshua, Joshua did, even though it was secondhand, but he knew it came from God. Mm -hmm. Verse 16, so Joshua took all the land, the hills, and all the south country, and all the land of Goshen, and the valley, and the plain, and the mountain of Israel, and the valley of the same, even from Mount Halak, that go up to Syria, even to Belgad in the Valley of Lebanon. You see, because of his commitment, God was with him. And he was able to take territory. If you get a map, and if you look at all of the land that Joshua conquered, it will literally blow you away that he was able to subdue so much territory. And the only reason he could do it is because God was with him. Amen. That was the only answer. The only conclusion, are there battles, are there struggles, are there issues in your life that you can't seem to deal with, you can't get the victory, you can't get the mastery over it? Maybe you need to do a self-inventory. Maybe I need to do a self-inventory. Maybe it's because I've not fulfilled God's calling, and maybe it's because I've not adhered strictly to God's word, and maybe it's because I'm not following through on the details, the particulars. God has given me to do. Right. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Joshua understood that. Yes, sir. And so verse 18, look at verse 18. He says, so Joshua made war a long time with all those kings. Mm -hmm. You got to be ready to war for a long time. Yeah. You got to be ready to dig in. Sometimes you got to dig yourself a foxhole. Yeah. And you got to be ready for a long, intense battle against the enemy. Yeah. And for some things, there are just no quick fixes. Sometimes you just got to battle. You got to be tenacious. You got to be like a bulldog, like a snapping turtle. 
You just, you just grab it and just hold on. So the Bible says that Joshua, he waged war for a long time. For a long time. Yeah, yeah. I, I, my dear brother in our church, Brother Sean Moran, he ran a couple weeks ago in a marathon. Yeah. And I've been trying to find a good Christian uh, psychiatrist to send him to. Because I don't know anyone in their right mind that runs 27 miles with no one after them, with no one chasing them. <laughs> but Brother Sean ran the marathon for almost 27 miles, 26 point, so many tenths of a mile. And they tell me that to run a marathon, you've got to be a well-tuned, fit machine. Because it's, it's a rigorous race to run. It's demanding on the body. And everything in you wants to quit, but you got to be set to run a long time. You see, the Christian race is not a hundred yard dash. It's not a spiritual sprint. It's a marathon. You got to be ready to, to wave war for a long time. You're willing to fight for a long time. And sometimes you got to build foxholes and barricades. You got to fortify yourself. Sometimes the battle gets so intense, all you can do is duck. Yeah. You gotta learn how to duck. You know where I grew up at, you learn how to duck. That was a survival instinct, to be able to duck. But every now and then you go on the offensive too. With the word of God, energized by the spirit of God. So the Bible says that Joshua waged war for a long time. And then in verse 23 as I close, it says, so Joshua took the whole land, according to all that the Lord said unto Moses. And Joshua gave it for an inheritance unto Israel, according to the divisions by the tribes. And the land rested from war. See, another thing that Joshua remembered, that he wasn't fighting for himself. All the battle and all the war it wasn't selfishly motivated. It wasn't because of his enlightened self-interest. Joshua knew that the people of God were entitled to an inheritance. And Joshua knew there would be posterity and there would be seed. And so he wanted to make sure that he left his children and his children's children with a better situation than what he had. So the Bible says, so Joshua took the whole land. I want the whole land. I don't want part of it. I want all of my family to be saved. All of them. And I will pray for them. And I will never give up on them. And some of them are bad as Jesse James. But I'll never give up on them. Because they're blood of my blood and they're flesh of my flesh. And my heart's desire and prayer to God is that they might be saved. You know, I picked up the newspaper this past week, and I saw just the newspaper, and they talk about the plight of the 15,000 African-American children in this state, how all the social indicators that the African-American children are in much worse condition than their white counterparts. And I said this morning on the radio, that might be true, but God is still saving a remnant of black children. And not all of our children are selling drugs, and all of our girls are getting pregnant out of wedlock, and some of them love God. And have strong testimony. Yeah. You know, believe me, come and follow me. I introduce you to some of them. Yeah. My heart's desire and prayer to God is that the whole thing might be saved. Yeah. That the whole community, the faith of the community can be changed by the power of God. Yeah. Now, beloved, I know that our church, as a church, we're doing pretty well. That most of us are middle class and we make a good income and we live in nice neighborhoods. And our children are motivated, they're learning, they're high achievers. And I thank God and I praise God and I bless God for that. But our children have to live in a world that is evil and wicked and corrupt. And the only way we can change that world is by changing the hearts Amen. of individuals, Amen. boys and girls. I want the whole thing. Amen. I want the whole thing as much as God has preordained and preplanned for us to influence and to touch. We want it touched and we're claiming by faith many souls be saved for the kingdom of God. When you get to heaven, don't you want somebody to be there because you sacrificed? Don't you want someone to come up to you and thank you for sacrificing?